For the past few slides, we've talked about information assets and resources and ways to protect these resources. So whenever you enter any institution, what you will see in front of you? You might see offices, seats, printers, documents, computers, shelves, you might see even systems, policies, procedures, employees themselves. All of these are the assets and properties of the institution. When talking about information assets, we mean the property and resources of the institution, which contain information or data specific to the organization, regardless of its form and method of storage, and whether these properties are technical documents or properties, or non-technical properties. Technical properties like data processing servers, databases, information systems, data storage units, networks, etc. And non-technical properties like contracts, printed documents like policies and procedures, bank forms, and so on. Let us take a more detailed examples of assets and information resources in the institution. Let's take a bank for example you'll find the main core banking system, which has data processing systems, integration systems, communication systems, electronic check clearing systems, e-channel system, and so on. You'll find customer databases, like which has the database management system, human resources management systems, and so on. You'll find networking systems and their protection systems, like data transmission systems, You'll find work procedures, policies, contracts, which is documents in paper format. In the coming few slides, we'll focus on security controls and measures, which are implemented through three main levels that complement each other in order to ensure a secure access to an optimal information security environment from all threats and risks. The first one is the administrative level, which has the administrative controls. We have technical level with their technical controls and we have the physical level with their physical security controls. First level is the administrative controls, which are also called procedural controls, which are a set of policies and procedures in place to define and direct employee actions in dealing with sensitive information for the institution. So it's concerned with how to conduct the business and how to conduct the daily operations. Let's consider the policies and procedures as the guidance who guides the employees to perform their daily business and operations. The second level of security controls is the technical controls, which are implemented primarily by the system through hardware, software, or even system firmware, including encryption, smart card, access control list, file auditing software. The third level of security controls is the physical controls which is the implementation of security measures in a specific structure that is used to prevent unauthorized physical access to sensitive materials. For example, we have CCTV cameras, motion alarm systems, lock steel doors, biometrics including voices, iris, fingerprints.